Hi, I'm Nathaniel Lyle, head of broadcast here at the Advocate News, your student news. For the students, by the students. And I'm here today to give you some internet tips and some Zoom tips. Let's delve into the informational superhighway, shall we? Mute your mic. To help keep background noise to a minimum, make sure you mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Be mindful of background noise. When your microphone is not muted, avoid activities that could create additional noise, such as shuffling papers. Position your camera properly. If you choose to use a web camera, be sure it is in a stable position and focused at eye level. Doing so helps create a more direct sense of engagement with the other participants. Limit distractions. You can make it easier to focus on the meeting by turning off notifications, closing or minimizing running apps, and of course muting your smartphone. Avoid multitasking. You'll retain the discussion better if you refrain from replying to emails or text messages during the meeting. You have to wait to work on that PowerPoint presentation until after the meeting ends. Prepare materials in advance. If you will be sharing content during the meeting, make sure you have the files and or links ready before the meeting begins. Consider your data cap. Data caps are one of the biggest culprits of slow internet speeds out there. ISPs don't advertise their data caps for obvious reasons, but they can seriously mess with your connection. A data cap means that you can use a certain amount of data every month, anything from a couple hundred megabytes to hundreds of gigabytes. If you exceed your data limit, your ISP will seriously restrict your internet speeds and you'll notice. If you don't know whether or not you have a data cap, check your bill. Chances are you do, and it will outline in the fine print. If you keep exceeding your data cap every month, talk to your provider about a plan with a higher data limit. Internet connection! Give your router a break! Reset your router every month or so to give the device a break and refresh the internet connection. If you experience serious speed issues, you might consider resetting your router every day. If you have a modem separate from your router, reset that too. Resetting the modem stimulates your connection to your ISP. And that's what turning it on and off again is all about. Don't want to add another task to your to-do list? Easy. Get an outlet timer. Like CenturyLink, you can program a timer. You can plug your modem and router into a timer that will turn the system on and off for you. Set the timer to restart the system every night while you're in bed. That way you can wake up to the fresh internet feeling every morning. Keep in mind resetting your router and modem won't magically turn your snail of a connection into a cheetah. But it will help, and it's a super easy fix. Reposition your router. This is a quick one. Is your router in some remote corner of the house? If so, move it! If the Wi-Fi signal from your router can't reach you, your internet connection will suffer. Position your router toward the middle of your house, preferably on whichever floor you hang out on the most. If you spend all your time in the living room on the first floor, put your router on that same level. Embrace Ethernet! Everybody uses Wi-Fi these days, which is great. Wireless connections are awesome and convenient, but they're not always fast. Cable connections like Ethernet will always be faster and more reliable than the wireless ones. The cable gets the signal directly to your device rather than relying on over-the-air transmissions. If you can, connect your most important devices to the Internet via an Ethernet cable. Connect these devices to the Ethernet, like your TV, PlayStation, Xbox, or any other gaming console, especially your laptop or desktop computer that you use a lot. Especially, especially, if you tend to watch data-heavy media like videos on your TV. Cable connections are best. Ethernet is automatically more secure than Wi-Fi. If you want to keep your banking information absolutely private, Ethernet is a better way to go. For my personal setup, I use a flat 100-foot Cat7 Ethernet cable to hardwire both my gaming consoles and my PC to the router that's in position across my house. Block those ads! Almost every content provider displays advertisements everywhere you go. Online, there are endless ads, pictures, GIFs, or GIFs, and auto-played videos. Even if you don't mind watching or seeing advertisements, your internet connection does. Ad media slows down your internet connection, so sometimes it's easier to just block them. 
install an ad blocking plugin that will shut down those data heavy autoplay videos and you'll free up some breathing room for your connection. If you're anything like me, you routinely keep dozens of tabs and windows open on your browser. All that open media can slow down your connection, which is why I recommend having a backup browser like Opera. You can also just close out those unused tabs. Bonus tip! Install a virus or malware scanner. If you haven't already done so, I highly recommend installing an antivirus and malware scanning software. It's probably obvious that any viruses or malware lurking on your computer will put a major drag on your internet speed. Plus, you should have protection software installed as a general rule anyway. Well, that's it. That's my tips and tricks. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and don't forget to follow me. You can find my portfolio site as well, natelisle.weebly.com. Thank you for watching.